Hello everybody, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Model and Bench back again and another book review for you from Wing Leader. And this is Wing Leader Photo Archive number 21 by Chris Thomas and it is the Hawker Typhoon Part 2, summer 43 to early 44. So one can only assume there may well be a Part 3. Um, I've had a very quick flick through this book, not really sort of taken much in, but had a quick flick through. This is lovely. Uh, this is one of the nicest books they've ever done. There's lots of original, proper colour photography from the war. And if you're a fan of the Typhoon, I, I'm... I love, I'm not a fan of the Typhoon, I'm not, it's not like a B-52 to me, but I do really like it. It's a big old brute and it's a tough old bird and um, I really do like them. I've got three of the Airfix 124 scales, so uh, it shows how much I like them. So um, this is, as I say, number 21 and it's from Wing Leader Productions. You can get it here, wingleader.co.uk, still 1995. Since 2021, the price of crisps in the UK have gone up 65%. Um, in 2021, a bag of 24 walkers was £3.50. Now a box of 20 is £4.50, which comes to a 65% increase per bag. So, uh, yeah, we're at that one out. These have just kept at the same price all the way through. I don't know how they do it. There's bound to be a price to come. Price rose coming. Um, but anyway, if you want to get one, go there. There's the ISBN number there. You can see that. And you can freeze frame and read it off or whatever. But I would thoroughly recommend getting it from, these company, from this company direct because, as I always say when they send me these books, the book comes in a beautiful little bubble wrap bag that has a folded over end that sticks down like that. So that's it sealed up there so it's not going to get damaged. Note, no damaged corners, no dog ears, no nothing. Then it's in an envelope, nice rigid card envelope, and then this in turn is in a sealed plastic bag. So if it gets wet, it doesn't matter. It can't get bent really unless your postman's a butcher. Um, and yeah, it's just fantastic packaging. So uh, I thoroughly recommend going to direct from them. So let's have a look inside and see what we've got in here. And here we've got, as I said, there is some beautiful colour photography in here. I've got the lighting set up so we don't get any glare. I hope we uh, don't get uh, too much. Um, so there's a little bit there about Chris Thomas and they're talking about the last quarter of 43 also saw the introduction of the fourth distinct canopy style on the Typhoon. There was no change in mark number to signify this, nor apparently within the RAF was there any official nomenclature to signify the variance. So very, very strange. You could get a 1B and a 1B with a canopy, a, 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 a bubble top. So very interesting, um, very unusual as well. So some beautiful pictures in here. As I say, you can go through here and we will go through it page by page, but I'm not going to cover everything in absolute detail. So very interesting shot here. Genuine World War II colour shot. Note the slight sheen on the paintwork. And also of note in here is the, there's a crisscross. There's a cross pressed into the door. More on that later. Um, so you can see the cockpit interior has been painted black to reduce reflections on night operations. So uh, very interesting that to see that it's painted black. I would have thought it would have been in green, but it's not. Um, here we can see a puff of smoke from the exhaust as squadron leader Bob Roberts starts up EK172. Sheen on the paintwork is evident. Yellow stripe is still there. Note the wear on the wing routes where uh, people have been getting in and out. So very interesting for your weathering that one. Coming over the page. We've got the uh, production standard, so this is going to be um, production standard. I found this very interesting. <laughs> it might make you cry. Uh, between February and July 43, 400 typhoons with serial numbers EJ, EK ranges were delivered. Owing to the severe shortage of service serviceable Sabre engines, more than a third of them would go straight into Purgatory Store and most would remain there, remain there until post-war scrapping took place. And uh, this one's showing the scoops in the cockpit and the side to let air in and out of the cockpit, which is a nice touch. Here we've got the um, later sprung seat being fitted. Apparently pilots suffered a lot of chatter because of all the vibration. And um, so here they're fitting the, you can see a load of old seats here. And they're fitting the later um, padded seats with the spring in the bottom and everything. We've got some pictures of that there. And then going over the page here, we've got three bladed prop. You can see here we've got the, um, the Typhoon ID stripes. Beautifully painted, very, very neat, very tidy. 
So um, not like some of the DJ stripes. These are not DJ stripes. They're not invasion stripes. They were identification stripes because a lot of people got them confused with FW190s and apparently would shoot at them. Um, you can see here's another on the ground. You can see those stripes on there, which are beautifully painted on. And then coming over here, we've got a Scottish pilot of one squadron. Um, kill markings refer to confirmed claims for FW190s destroyed in March and April. So uh, we've got the kill markings on there. We've got two swastikas. Um, but also note, most of these typhoons you see in here are of the card or variety. So that's very interesting. We can see the... Um, We've got the typical modeler's notes bits here. So it's telling us day fighter scheme, typhoon identity markings beneath the wings, IFF aerial wires, rear view mirror and blister have been removed. Um, tail wheel features anti shimmy tire. Yellow leading edge stripes extend from the leading lights to the landing lights to the wingtips. Head armor is fitted with a headrest. Remember we talked about this with the Spitfire. Scotch mixed colors are provisional. So there we go. So these are great in these books. You get these modelers' notes to sort of confirm everything for you, and they're from the professionals as well. See one here, which is uh, which is unfortunately crashed. You can see another one here with the cross pressed into the door. Again, that's painted black. You kind of wonder if all the tubing in here was black as well. That looks pretty silver to me. I think this framework was painted silver or aluminium, but then the inside of the cockpit's been painted black by the look of it. Um, here's a couple on the east coast. See when they're being refuelled, and then we've got the bomb foons revealed. So these are the bomber typhoons. Some very interesting stuff here. I noticed. Um, you can see there how they're loading the bombs. If you wanted to do a diorama, you've got all the mechanism there that they use. The bomb trolley there. We've got here. We have some uh, special features marked out. We've got C's marked on the aircraft. Um, here we've got a, a typhoon carrying some bombs. Another couple there. Very very nice indeed. Uh, I found this very interesting. Apparently the bomb um, pylon was very, very close to the ejection chutes for the wing-mounted machine guns or cannons. So they actually made this extension, and you can see here, this is it from the side, and this is it from the front, and actually ejected the chutes away from the bombs. So uh, that was a good touch. See, just like with Lancaster, you've got the early type tyre here, and the later shimmy type tyre there, or anti-shimmy, should I say. And then coming over here again, you can see we've got this beautiful wear on the wing for your weathering. And you can see their lovely detailed shot of the rudder, which is going to be really nice to capture. Um, again, we can see those stripes underneath there. Very slight sheen to the paintwork. Very noticeable on all of them. They've all got this slight sheen to the paintwork, so that's worth uh, remembering. Here we can see the car door type closed up from an unusual angle. We can see some of the top. It's, it looks quite claustrophobic in there, actually, doesn't it? Here's one here, we could see the flaps down and we've got the inner flap detail there. You can see there's nothing on top and just some rimming on the bottom. Again, that's a car door type as you can see. Uh, and then we've got here a pilot posing in front of his aircraft. We've got one here with the flaps just slightly down. I'm not sure if they were hydraulic or mechanical on these. Um, there we go, some lovely, lovely pictures of typhoons. And then you've got the desert trials. So you can see the, uh, the nice brown and tan camouflage. So you can see again modeler's notes, dark earth, middle stone and azure, black spinner, Vokes tropical filter, white coded, white code letter, cannon fairings, headrest, no underwing stores, so there's no pylons or anything, no leading edge stripes, no mirror blister and no IFF. So there you go. So there's the actual aircraft, there's your modeler's notes for it. Going over the page, more here in the desert, you can see all, all the staining and everything on there. And then here we've got some more typhoons, again car door type, um, again showing no evidence of any bomb um, pylons or anything. Lovely picture there, beautiful black and white shot. And then we've got the night fighter. So we can see in here we've got the pilot control units and, um, and everything here for all the different cockpit layouts. And then this is the... Uh, a control unit, arrow D, was mounted in the port outer gun bay, which required the rerouting of the gun heating pipe. So, um, obviously, they had some special equipment for night fighting, which is going to be shown here with the letters and everything in there. Um, here we've got the night fighter 1B. Spent two months at RAF, RAE Farnborough for assessment. 
Uh, the original three blade propeller was replaced by a four blade to reduce vibration. Uh, the port wing had transmitter aerials swept installed in the landing light bay fared over, you can see here, and azimuth aerials on the wingtip. So you've got the ones there in the landing light and then ones there in the wingtip. And you can see them on here as well in the modeler's notes. The starboard wing had elevation aerials swept mid-span and mid-cord. Azimuth aerials were sighted on the wingtip. So again, we've got the, the you can see here there's the two wings. And here we've got the modeler's notes. Lots and lots of detail about how to build, paint and everything that model. So very, very nice indeed. Uh, here we've got the actual period camouflage scheme layout from, from the RAF. And then here's a, it's like a brand new night fighter sat there. Ready to go. Um, this is a very interesting picture here. Um, I will read this, uh, this description out here. Um, a new production standard emerged from the Gloucester factory at the end of July 1943 and JP682 is a factory fresh example photographed on the 17th of August 1943. The patchy paintwork is due to the modular construction with many items built by some subcontractors. At least four different shades of primer are evident. Typhons were now being delivered with exhaust fairings designed to improve the airflow around the exhaust stubs and reduce the carbon monoxide penetrating the cockpit. So we can see here, one, two, three, four different shades of primer. So when people tell you the correct colour for zinc chromate or whatever primer, just show them that picture. It's like, you know, you can see the green here is finished there and the, those primer panels aren't painted. And if you ask me, that green looks a little bit different to that green. So people talk about all these colours and everything. You can see it again here, you've got all the different shades of primer. And then here we've got a bubble top. First couple of bubble tops we've seen, I think. Uh, I've got one here with this, uh, this little dog on the on the tail, and that looks very much like Jess. I must say, looks like a little fox terrier. Um, so yeah, very very nice indeed. Beautiful pictures. Here we've got one with the clover leaf on, and uh, absolutely gorgeous. And again, you've got the modeler's notes, and then we've got the rocket. Um, rocket launch rails on there so I think they, they come in the airfix kit don't they which is a nice touch so you've got your rocket rails there you've got the cannons matted in the wings a formidable tank buster this thing was just a shame about the reliability of the engines I think wouldn't it but uh, yeah we've got Popeye there and then here's some more lovely images again we've still got these um, identity stripes here's one with bombs fitted here's one with uh, looks like a bomb pylon but no bomb more colour photos, look at the absolutely gorgeous again, look at the sheen and you can see here the exhaust shrouds are fitted there, you can see them there as well. Here again we've got a lovely shot and this is this is going to be um, IFF aerial, so the, it's pretty much everything was the same in the war, I mean the Lancaster went from, went from the wires to this, although they left the wires in place didn't they, and you can see the uh, step there down out of the fuselage as well so they can get in. Very, very, I, I, I couldn't sit in there, it's too claustrophobic for me. Um, so here we got um, this aircraft banks away from the pho photographer revealing SBA A and Type 90 IFFB aerials. Also see inset with the extended entry step and staining from shell casing ejection slots. Notice that, good for your weathering. Also the downward identification light C starboard light hidden the upper surface camouflage wraps round under the radiator intake oh yeah look at that a feature of the factory applied scheme not present on some in-service repaints that's an interesting little oh, i'd never noticed that interesting little bit in it you can see it there as well it's not until someone tells you these things which is what these books are great for you just may not notice it but here we go and you can see here this one doesn't wrap round <laughs> interesting so um and I said you were about looking at the door with the cross in it. This one has a circle and apparently this door was cast and it was um, made from by a subcontractor, Press Steel. And I believe Press Steel went on to make all the bodywork or body panels for British Leyland. I believe that was the name of the company. So um, there we go. And uh, more colour picture and uh, more black and white pictures here. Very nice. And then again, we've got the modellers notes. Again, stripes, cannons and... Uh, Pods on the wings. Now here we can see, apparently by the 7th of February 1944, they had to get rid 
of these identification stripes. So um, they're painted over apparently. Um, but these, they're, like, they're very, very roughly painted. I don't know what's going on there. But um, it probably says in the notes down here. Another pilot with his dog. More photos there. Unfortunately, here's one that's um, been crashed. You can see here with, with all the all the um, framework inside exposed there. Four blade propellers, it tells you all about how they tried and tried and tried. And in the end, they just went back to the three. Um, this one here, they did engine um, engine boost tests and a pro prolonged use of 12 pound boost resulted in an engine failure. So that was a very apparently very neatly crashed, very beautifully crashed. Looks like fully salvageable as well. And then we've got Desert Trials 2. So more Desert Trials here. You can see them there. Another beautiful colour image. Again, notice the sheen on the paintwork. Another crashed bubble top. Then we've got some pilots probably just returned from a mission. Loading bombs and writing on there with little, little uh, notes to add off. More images, more images. These spots on the wings apparently um, uh, where the, um, the spots on the upper wing are self-sealing fuel tank fixings. So very interesting. You could feature those on your model. Then we've got a guy here standing on the wing of his aircraft, proudly posing for the camera. And here's one unfortunate. This one, um, this one had a tire burst or something on takeoff, and uh, went nose over. But it's nice to see all the streaking and everything under there for your modelling. More black and white photos, down but not out. So here's one here that's unfortunately uh, folded one landing gear up. Flaps down, as you can see, flaps down. These are the same aircraft. It's just like a whirlwind there, doesn't it? Another pilot posing with his uh, with his crashed aircraft. And another and another. More here, we've got a couple of bikes on the ground. Got one here which has got all his engine panels removed as well. Pilot posing with the car door just before he goes out by the look of it. And here's the guy who's queuing up for some tea and cheese rolls, I expect. Another lovely picture there showing you all the weathering and the chipping and everything on the leading edge of that wing. And then there's more pictures here. I do remember seeing, and I, did, I didn't notice it when I went through, but what was very interesting, and I didn't spot it, maybe you did, if you want to go back and watch the video again, you might spot it, but they showed some aircraft where the inside of the undercarriage doors were painted in the squadron colours to denote the squadron leader, so when they could form, so they could get the proper formation for takeoff. Obviously, once the doors are closed, you wouldn't see them. But I can't, I can't see here now. I, I, I specifically saw it earlier on, unless I dreamt it. But, um, yeah, go back and watch the video again. You'll see it. It's, it's, it's here. Definitely here. Um, I can't believe I missed that. But anyway, so yes, yeah, some of the aircraft had the inside of the gear doors painted in a checker. Um, they reckon one was blue and white, one was red and white in the squadron colours so that the other pilots knew who the squadron leader was from a distance and they you could let him go first or whatever. And then here we've got the um, chronology from spring 43 to early 44 and this is what was basically done to them. So if, you, if you're building a model and you know that it's for instance from you know August 43 then there you go. That's the notes you need to bear in mind. Uh, and then here we've got all the uh, serial numbers, the production batches, that were delivered between March 43 and July 44. So um, I can only imagine there's going to be a part three because surely they made these beyond July 44. I'm guessing. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know a lot about the typhoon. I don't know a lot about anything to be quite honest with you. And then there's the rear cover giving you some examples of the beautiful images that are inside. So there we are guys. Um, hope you've enjoyed that. Thoroughly recommend this book. I mean for 20 quid. I mean these days magazines are over a fiver. You know, a packet of cigarettes is nearly 20 quid. This is a bargain. Absolute bargain. Beautiful book. Beautifully presented. As always with Wing Leader, they are lovely books. And they are just... I mean, the, if you remember when I first got the first book I got was the Lancaster one. And, um, yeah, the, the Mark One, uh, Mark 1 and 3 Lancaster by, um, 
by Richard was uh, just absolutely, it's like the Bible. You know, you don't need anything else. It's, it's wonderful. So um, thanks for watching, guys. Go get yourself one. I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.